So for today's video, we're going to get down really low. And this actually is plantain. Not to be confused by the plantain that grows the fruits that look a lot like bananas. This is a completely different plantain. And this particular plantain is called Plantago Major, or common plantain. And at this time of year, it's starting to get the seed pods at the end. And we know that this is common plantain because of the, I'm just going to pick one of the leaves, because of the rounded leaves here. Let's turn it around this way. And if it was Plantago lanceolata, which is also found in this area, the leaves would have more of a narrow shape, thus narrow-leafed plantain. And these plants are very common in this area, although they're not native. And you find them in lawns, provided that you're not um, spraying. We tend to find these a lot in lawns throughout America. And as I said, in this particular area, right now they're starting to get their seed pods. And the primary way that most people will use or work with Plantago is as a wound medicine, particularly small cuts, small abrasions where um, immediate bandages are needed. Think, um, you know, you fell down and maybe you got a little bit of a cut on your knee or you uh, pricked your finger while out, um, you know, picking up some, some pieces of wood and maybe you got a splinter and now it's bleeding. And this is a very common common medicine and very easy to work with that even kids can use and generally it's used as a poultice on the wounds and what that means is you can just um, bruise it or chew it up and get it nice and juicy get nice of that mucilage it is a bit bitter and so you can see I started to chew it up and then put that poultice um, on your wound. And then when you get in the house, you can wash it, clean it up, um, and use this and a bandage if you wanted to. And studies have shown that it's very, Plantago is very high in um, antimicrobial properties, which basically means that that's not... It's not going to let the bacteria in, or it's going to help get rid of that bad bacteria. It's going to help get rid of that um, bad viruses or anything that may make those small cuts or abrasions um, infected. And so it's very good in that way. These particular seed pods, you'll see there's a little bit of a... Um, they're not dry yet, but eventually these will dry out. And this is where we get psyllium from. When we think of Metamucil or any of those over-the-counter fiber products to help regulate our, our um, digestive and our bowel movements, this is really what they're, what they're using is the psyllium from, from the husks here. Um, and then, of course, you know, doing whatever commercial manufacturers do. Um, to make the products last longer and make us buy them and that kind of thing. One of the ways that I've worked with Plantago is internally. When I had a case of suspected candida, which is a type of yeast um, in the gut, and, a, and it's not a good kind of yeast. It makes us very sick. Um, it causes allergic reactions to various types of food and sinus problems. And I actually was drinking for a while a basic, basic infusion 
of plantain to help heal the intestinal tissues. Now again, this isn't something that I would necessarily recommend to somebody else, because everybody's different, but this is what I was called to, was to work to heal the tissues, to heal those minor um, irritations inside uh, my gut caused by an overabundance of um, the candida flora in my gut. Okay, and now here, I just wanted to show you a little bit of the difference is Plantago lancelata. And again, it's plantain, but it's the long